it's a great pleasure to be part of this conference and see the advances that have been made in understanding the immune system and they're not applicable to medicine. However, what we must realize is that the field of immunology did not start with, with the immune system. In fact, at the time of Edward Jenner, when he invented vaccination, there was no concept of, of immune system. Back then, nothing. It was a black box. We didn't even know what it was. So what was back then, and what we started with, was the concept of immunity. It's quite a different thing. Uh, so what is the difference between the immune system and immunity? Well, immune system is a system of cells that interact together to protect you from invaders, kill cancer cells, uh, maintain homeostasis. This is everything that we've learned recently. Well, immunity is different. So let's see what immunity so, is. So um, immune system helps us deal with viruses here and now. When we're exposed to the virus, immune system gets activated. It's dealing with the virus. Now, immunity is something we acquire and we use it for the future. It protects us from reinfection. Sometimes these two terms are confused and we speak about immunity and immune system as if it's the same thing. It's different. And it has been observed for eons, even before Jenner, that uh, when a person goes through infection, through disease, um, they acquire this state, this magical state of immunity, and then they never get the same disease again. And of course, humanity has been obsessed by trying to find a shortcut, by um, finding that immunity without going through the disease so that you can protect yourself from the disease ahead of the time. Well, naturally, that doesn't happen that way. Naturally, you have to go through infection to acquire uh, immunity. And so the concept of vaccination was born, and the concept of, of vaccination was modeled pretty much on top of the concept of naturally acquired immunity, is that you, you have your uh, vaccine, you acquire immunity by going through the vaccination process, and um, the concept is that this will protect you for a lifetime from infection. Now, when some idea is being told many times over and over again, it is established as being true. However, we don't have to go too far to find data that contradicts this concept. So, so. to recap, we are dealing with the concept that vaccination gives you lifelong immunity, and that's something that is being uh, downloaded into us as when we take the course of immunology and so forth, become professionals. Uh, however, uh, you can uh, easily find articles in the literature, in, in peer review literature on PubMed, that uh, <laughs> pretty much contradict this idea. And so here's one article that summarizes 18 other articles. So they're all together in one publication. And uh, here what is reported, um, we have um, um, the descriptions or you know, the summaries of a, a number of uh, outbreaks of measles uh, that happened in the 70s, 80s, early 90s in highly vaccinated schools and colleges. And so what is being reported here is, you know, the year when it happened, uh, what percent of school was vaccinated, and what percent of measles cases were vaccinated. And you see that there is a lot of vaccinated kids who got measles despite being vaccinated. So an interesting thing is that you can hardly find um, um, an, a publication about measles happening in highly vaccinated kindergarten. So if you keep track, you will see that measles, when it's happening in vaccinated kids, it's happening a little bit later. So let's, let's take a, um, a more general look at this. So the same paper says, um, um, uh, looking at 1989 statistics, um, uh, in the United States, 40% of all measles patients in the United States were vaccinated, according to the recommended schedule. But another thing that is interesting is that the majority of them are older kids. Compared to pre-vaccination era, uh, we have the distribution, the age distribution um, of measles is, is it's pretty young. You know, the kids are getting over their measles uh, in early age, and by the time they're 15, pretty much everyone got measles. But the bulk is, you see, it's like uh, kindergartners. Now, in the um, 90s or early 90s, we see a different pattern. We see 
uh, vaccinated kids are getting measles much later in life. However, there are still some pockets, some inner city pockets where kids were unvaccinated uh, because they didn't have access to health care. In those, in unvaccinated kids in the 80s, they still have their measles pretty early um, as toddlers. So you see that uh, from this statistics, it's pretty obvious that the problem that we have with the measles vaccine is not that we have a problem with a vaccine efficacy, because if that was the case, if there were a bunch of kids who got vaccinated and vaccine just didn't work for them, uh, they would have their measles at the same young age as unvaccinated, as their unvaccinated peers. But what we see here, the problem is with durability of vaccine protection, not with efficacy. And because the problem is with durability, now um, the, um, the problem with vaccination affects not only or is concerned not only of new and expectant parents and their pediatricians, but for all of us. Everyone who got their vaccine, measles vaccine, back in the childhood, in the 60s or 70s, whenever it is, and by now, do we know whether this vaccine still protects us or not? So let's uh, take a closer look at that. And let's focus on the durability. So now, so we know that um, natural, going through a natural infection establish, establishes lifelong immunity that has been borne out by centuries of observations. But with vaccine, it's different. And the question is, OK, so what is different between natural exposure and vaccine exposure or vaccination that makes a difference on vaccine durability or durability of protection. And I think there is a lot of talk in uh, various communities that it's a matter of how vaccine is administered. We know that not typically natural infections come from mucosal surfaces, whereas vaccines are delivered by injection. At least this is the case for measles. Is this the reason why measles vaccine doesn't give you lifelong immunity because it is injected? And the, the answer is no, that's not the reason. There is another reason, and we will go through the uh, data that it will become obvious. The, the reason why vaccines are not durable has something to do with replicative capacity of the virus. So natural viruses, natural viral infections, wild viruses, let's call them, they have high replicative capacity in their host. Um, and exposure can happen either from mucosal surfaces, but also through the skin. There are some viruses that are naturally spread by bites, so that would be like uh, being injected under the skin, and still, you know, that, that's a natural exposure. Now, viral vaccines, as we know, are made in a special way. Um, like if you were to just isolate a virus from a sick person and inject it into the next person, you get the disease, so you can't do it. You have to attenuate the virus. So virus is attenuated, and attenuation means that um, it lowers their replicative capacity. They are passed through tissues from another species, or they are grown at a different temperature so that when they are put back in a human body, they don't replicate as fast. They are attenuated. There is another way to make a vaccine and to make virus completely inactivated, and this is done by treating a virus with formaldehyde. It cross-links the virus, makes it fixed, so the virus is pretty much dead. And um, a la the, the most latest technology in um, vaccination is to make a virus-like particles. Um, the way it is done, it is um, you have yeast, um, a recombinant yeast, where you have a uh, gene that is encoding a surface protein from the virus is put into the yeast. And uh, once, um, once the, the way the vaccine is produced is that a viral particle is buzzing from the yeast surface, carrying just the viral surface protein, but it is hollow inside. There is nothing else in, of the virus inside it. So you have a virus-like particle. And so we have a few vaccines that are made that way. So, um, so all of these vaccines, they either don't replicate at all or they have low replicative capacity um, in the way they mimic the virus.